Thank you for joining me today here at Rewritten Vintage Homestead. And I'm doing some landscaping in my front yard. I'm putting in a Native American medicine wheel and I thought I would explain to everyone what that is and its significance. So I'm trying to be very intentional on everything I do here at the homestead. So my garden, I wanna make sure it's food that we actually will eat and that's gonna nourish us, that I can share with others. Um, or things that are important to me, like my hollyhocks that have been handed down from my parents and um, seeds that I've brought from our previous home and my Indian corn. And so even in my landscaping, I want it to be intentional and something that's important. And so a medicine wheel can be any size. It can be a small piece of paper or it can be something big that you build. It could be a poster just something to look at. Uh, what I did was I had an area around my bird bath that I didn't really know what to do. And so I made a circle. That circle is divided into fourths. So it kind of looks like a wagon wheel. And the number four is very significant to Native Americans um, because it is the circle of life divided into fours. And we're gonna go through each one of those uh, fourths as we go along. So I had this space out in my yard that I didn't really know what to do with, but I wanted something really intentional. I'm trying to, everything I put out in my yard, I want it to serve a purpose, either medicinal, uh, edible, uh, something for the birds, something for the bees. Um, and this is gonna be spiritual for me. So I'm making a uh, medicine wheel and I'll show you how to do it in just a minute. Another reason why the medicine wheel is so sacred to Native Americans is it's used as a teaching tool. So just like in history, if you think about our monuments and things that are being torn down, you can't learn from them anymore. They're not there, you can't see them. Um, so there's no more discussion. It's like it never happened. Um, the medicine wheel is, is right in front of you. And if someone else sees it, they're gonna ask about it. So you can use it as a teaching tool. And you'll see it a lot. I've seen it a lot in the corporate world anymore where they'll talk about to, be, to have a well-rounded work atmosphere. You have to have a uh, time for exercise, a time for meditation, a time for work, a time for play. Um, and that's, they've taken that, uh, that idea from Native Americans. They even use the same colors. And so the center of the wheel is where the balance is. If any one of those aspects, whether in nature or in your body or in your mind or in the seasons, if any one of those quadrants gets off whack, the rest of them don't work together. So you have to keep everything at an even keel. Some uh, One other side note that's interesting is that the colors are red, yellow, black, and white, and they've been that way as long as there have been um, medicine wheels. And those represent all of the people in the universe, all of the colors of human beings. So it's very inclusive and it, it includes everyone. And we have to meet in the middle, we have to work together, we all have to take care of Mother Earth um, and we all have to keep ourselves in balance in order to work together. So the first thing I did was I tied a string around the middle of my pipe there and went all the way around the circumference to make sure I had a nice even circle. Then you need to determine which way is north, south, east and west. Each one is very significant to the medicine wheel. So facing this way towards my house uh, is north. Uh, the back side is south. To the right is east. To the left is west. Now each one of those will have a representative color. Um, and you can do that by painting a rock and putting it in your medicine wheel 
I'm going to try to have my flowers significant of the color uh, for each piece. Uh, or you can paint bricks or whatever you want to do. There's really no right or wrong way. So the first quadrant we're going to talk about is the one that faces north and that's represented by the color white um, and it also represents the season winter which is a time of reflection and slowing down um, and as far as emotions it represents mental uh, wellness. So when you're focusing on the area that's white you want to think about all the wisdom that you have. Only positive energy, nothing negative, um, your maturity, and goals that you have for yourself for the future and how far you've come. And that is the first quadrant and that is the one that faces north. The second quadrant is the one that faces the east. And since the sun rises in the east, the color is yellow. Um, it is about your spiritual aspect of your life. And the Native Americans believe in a creator, Mother Earth, a Grandmother Moon. And so they see the earth and the universe as working in conjunction with the creator. So when you're in front of that quadrant, you're thinking about your connection to the earth, your, cre your connection to the creator, um, and you're trying to bring closeness between the two of you when you're in the yellow quadrant that faces the east. It's also a time of, um, if you look at it in an aspect of age, it's the time where you're uh, newborn just like we follow in the Christian tradition as far as Easter. Um, it's similar in that it's about new life, new life uh, coming to the earth, re a time of rebirth. And you may have already lived that part in your life, but you still want to take what you've learned to bring you closer to the Creator. The area that faces south is represented by the color red. Um, it represents the season of summer. And if you think of it in time of, uh, in aspect of age, it's your teen years. So it's when you're the strongest, uh, your mental clarity is the clearest, you're the healthiest. Um, but when you're reflecting on it, which is what the medicine wheel is, you want to make sure that uh, all aspects of your life, all four quadrants are working together simultaneously to bring you good health. And so when you're in front of the red, which is summer, that faces south, uh, you're thinking about your emotional well-being. So whether that be if you need to cry, you cry. If you need to laugh, you laugh. If you need to yell, you yell. Whatever you need to be emotionally healthy, that's what you need to take care of. And the area that faces west is represented by the color black and by the season fall. And so when you think of fall, um, you think of the beautiful colors, so it's surprising that it's black, um, but you have to remember that in fall, the reason we're getting the beautiful colors is because uh, the sun is not uh, giving the chlorophyll and nutrient and foods needed to leaves and plants, so they're dying off. And it's a time in our life of shedding uh, past experiences, um, people that are bringing us down, um, where spring was a time of rebirth, fall is a time of ridding. So you're ridding yourself of all of those things that keep you from being 
a well-rounded person. And this is my beautiful finished product, uh, my medicine wheel. Uh, here is the white. These uh, rocks that I got that are painted, I got from Roan, Tennessee when I was on vacation. That's where I have ancestors from. Uh, they came from North Carolina to Roan, Tennessee. And so that represents my family. These smaller rocks that you see throughout the garden, those came from the riverbed at Cherokee, North Carolina. So white is winter, it faces north. Yellow is spring. Faced east, then we go to the red. Red is summer, faces south. And there's another one of my beautiful rocks from North Carolina. And then over here is fall and it's represented by the black rock and it's got fall colors to represent ridding yourself of negative energy and all together it makes a beautiful medicine wheel where everything is in balance and I just love it. I wanted to show everybody this beautiful heirloom tomato. It's a Cherokee purple and it originated in Tennessee and the history on it is that these seeds were brought to Tennessee by the native uh, Cherokee tribes. It is an heirloom tomato and when uh, a plant is considered heirloom, that means it's an open pollinated plant that uh, isn't, isn't a hybrid plant. So it's not been put together with anything else. So it's all natural. And because of that, uh, it is susceptible to disease, unlike the hybrid plants that have been bred uh, against that. So, but this is just a beautiful purple color and the inside is almost black. And I was gonna give it a taste. It has a rich, a real rich meaty taste. is delicious so if you ever get a chance in your garden give this a try you can save these seeds uh, and uh, I'll show you uh, beginning of the fall how I save my tomato seeds Welcome to Rome County, Tennessee, and we came here looking for ancestors. Uh, this is the home of Robert Brashear, who was one of my great, great, great grandfathers. And I'm right here uh, in between the Tennessee Valley and the Cumberland uh, Plateau, these mountains here behind me. They're beautiful. And it's here that my grandfather, Brashear, uh, traveled from North Carolina and bought 643 acres by the Clinch River. Uh, lived here for many years with his family. Uh, left that property to his son, Isaac, who's another one of my great grandfathers. And uh, Isaac had that property until he passed away, left it to his son, Albsom. Alpsum had that property until he passed away and his wife sold it to another one of my family members, William Morgan.